now we will start with some objectives in ring theory. These are elementary problems of the first section. So which of the following is a ring with finite elements? Now we know that uh, Z has infinite elements and uh, what about Z7? Z7 has elements from 0, 1 bar up to 6 bar and M3R means it is a set of all uh, 3 by 3 matrices with uh, entries in what entries in real numbers so there are how many matrices you can form if the entries are allowed to be real numbers you can form infinite such matrices so the set is infinite obviously set of rational number is also a infinite set so the answer to this question is that which of the following ring is a ring with finite elements it will be z7 with respect to addition modulo 7 and multiplication modulo 7 when I move, move to the next question, which of the following is not a ring? Now, the first one is integers with respect to addition and multiplication thus forms a ring. Z7 uh, with respect to addition and multiplication modulo n is also, modulo 7 is also ring. M3 are the set of all matrices with respect to usual addition and usual multiplication also forms a ring. Okay, and what, are, what about the fourth one? What is uh, Q star? Q star means set of all rational numbers minus zero, right? So if you observe that Q star with respect to addition itself, so this itself uh, does not form a group. So this is not not a group. Why it is not a group? Because uh, the ad additive identity in this case uh, must be how much? Must be zero, isn't it? Because A plus zero must be equal to A. So additive identity zero, but zero is not in Q star. So this means that Q star plus itself is not a group. So therefore Q star plus with respect to multiplication cannot form a ring. So the answer to this question is uh, the fourth option. If I move to the next question, which of the following is false in any ring? So we know that first property A into 0 is always equal to 0. So this is correct. A into minus B, we have uh, a theorem such that A into minus B is same as minus A into B and that is the same as minus of AB. So by virtue of that theorem, this is also correct. Now what about the C part? Minus A into minus B is equal to minus B into minus A. So is this property, uh, is, is this property true in any ring? Now here you see that if I replace minus A by alpha, and I replace B minus B by beta. This is trying to tell me that alpha into beta is equal to beta into alpha for any arbitrary ring. So does this property hold for any arbitrary ring? No, this property holds only if the ring is what? If the ring is a commutative ring. So here the ring is not given to be commutative. So I have a doubt on this thing. What about the D part? D part is additive inverse of A is minus A and it's inverse again will be equal to A. So this pro this property is also correct. Therefore, it means that which property becomes false is that this property becomes false. This property will become true if the ring would have been a commutative ring. So let us look at this question. Phi is a homomorphism from R1 with respect to first operation is plus, second operation is multiplication. R2 is a ring with respect to the first operation is star and second operation is hash. So, so then which of the following is uh, of these is correct? So if I right now, if I don't pay attention at any of these, what is the first uh, property of homomorphism? Phi of A plus B is equal to what? Phi of A right hand side who is the first operation the first operation is star so here it should be star and what is the second property phi of a into b left hand side multiplication operation is there is equal to phi of a and phi of b and a multiplication operator who is a multiplication operator in the second ring it is hash so this is the definition of phi is a homomorphism from R1 plus dot to R2 star hash. So check out where is this property written as. So if you look at the first property, the first one, the first one is having a mistake here because it should, it should have been star. The second one is having a mistake here again, right? The third one is A dot B is equal to phi star. So here it should have been a hash. 
So the fourth one is phi of a dot b is equal to phi hash phi b. So this means that this answer is uh, which of these is correct. So this one, the fourth one is actually the correct one. So let us see this example now, which of the following is a non-commutative ring. Now a non-commutative ring means a dot b should not be equal to b dot a for some a, a, b, right? So for some a, b. So can you see this integers is clearly a commutative ring because a into b is always equal to b into a. Z7 is also a commutative ring. a bar dot b bar is equal to b bar dot a bar. What about rational numbers with respect to multiplication? x dot y is always equal to y dot x. What happens to M3R? We know that if I take a into b matrix, it need not be equal to b dot a. So this is uh, this need not hold so a b equal to b a need not hold for all a b means a b is not equal to b a for some matrices a and b you can always find so that a b is not equal to b a so this means that m3 r with respect to addition and multiplication becomes a non-commutative ring if you look at the next question which of the following ring is a ring without unity Un so we will try to look at the rings and find the unities what is the unity of uh, z unity of z is one what is the unity of z7 the unity of z7 is one bar what is the unity of set of all matrices means unity means identity matrix uh, is means it's the identity with respect to the second operation, multiplication operation. So who is the unity in this particular ring? It is I3 cross 3 will work as a identity uh, as unity because A into I will again give you A, right? And what about this? This, this set is 2Z. 2Z contains of which elements? 2Z contains of 0 bar, 0, 2, plus 2, minus 2, plus 4, minus 4 and so on. So is one available in this set? No, one is not available in this set. So one into anything will be equal to the same element A, but this one is not available in 2Z. So this is the ring, 2Z is a ring which is without unity. So the next question is, which in which ring does the multiplicative inverse of two does not exist? Now I want you to do this exercise on your own. With this, we stop here.